praised. His name is worthy. His name is worthy. Precious, magnificent. Praise the Lord, everybody, and welcome to our Wednesday night Bible study. Thank you so much for joining us, and I pray that you're praying, uh, you know, through these Bible studies that you come with your heart as well as your mind. Amen. I know we were having some technical difficulties, and we invite you to come in person, and there will be none in person. Amen. But let's pray and get into the Word of God. Father, we thank you for this evening. God, we thank you for each and every individual here. Lord, and those watching and those sitting here today, God, we pray for the power of the Holy Spirit to be manifest in our midst, Lord. We thank you tonight, Lord God, for your word and the Holy Spirit enlightening the word, opening our understanding in Jesus' name. We thank you for it. Amen. Praise God and welcome again. We're going to go to Acts chapter 2 and beginning at verse 16. If you I ask you to, if you have your Bible to open up to that. You know, it just does something to us. If you would open the scriptures yourself, I know it's on the screen, but uh, I don't know. Something happens when you read it for yourself uh, in your own book. Amen. It says in verse 16, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, and it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit 
upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, here, this is a, um, a retelling of uh, prophecy given by the prophet Joel in the Old Testament. And, uh, you know, this whole idea of an outpouring of the Holy Spirit in the last days has been ringing in my spirit, even in prayer this morning. And, you know, back a few days ago on June the 1st, I was praying and I heard the phrase, the rain is coming. And I knew what he meant, the rain of the spirit. You know, the old saints used to pray when in prayer, you know, you hear them praying, they would say, the, you know, Lord, send the rain, send the rain, Lord. And I used to think, what in the world are they talking about? Uh, you know, they were talking about uh, the reign of the Spirit. Lord, you know, because the Spirit of God, even though he indwells every believer, he falls sometimes like rain. And sometimes it's like, uh, you know, a misty rain falling upon a congregation. I've been in congregations where the whole, like whole sections, hundreds of people just uh, uh, were uh, touched by the power of God. Nobody touched them, but it just happened. It was like somebody just turned on the battery of the electricity and, and the whole just sections, you know, just lit up and start praising God. Well, you know, it says in his last, God says in the last days he will pour out his spirit on all flesh. And it is so powerful to experience the presence of the Lord to the degree uh, that um, you know God has visited you. That's the best way I can put it. You know you haven't been in somebody's company that's a human being, but you've been in divine, in the divine presence. So life is much better when we live it with an awareness of God's presence. You know, if you're saved, God is always with you. I don't care when you, even if you don't have any consciousness of his presence, he's with you. But even though he's with you, he, can, he will manifest himself more powerfully when you learn to acknowledge his presence. It's just like, you know, if you have a friend with you and, you know, you're just on your cell phone, you know, and they're walking with you and you go to eat and you're just on your cell phone. You know, it's, it's, that's where a lot of people do God. You know, he's there, but there's no acknowledgement of him being there. So, you know, after a while you'd be like, you rude, I'm getting ready to go do something else because you're not even paying attention to me. <laughs> Let's not be that way with the Lord. Amen. So healings and miracles flow more frequently during a manifestation of the Holy Spirit. So back in our text in Acts chapter two, Peter quotes from the prophet Joel. And there were other aspects of this prophecy that he didn't emphasize at this time. Uh, one being the restorative attribute of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and let's go back to Joel chapter 2. And, and, and in Joel chapter 2, the prophet also prophesied about God doing restoration, God restoring. Anybody needing some restoring today? Amen. I'm telling you, when God restores something, you know it. And uh, I, most of us could use some type of restoration. But in Joel chapter 2, verse 25, he said, And I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten. And now, you know, uh, if you've, uh, when it comes to farming and agriculture, sometimes, we, you know, if you, if you study history, you remember, uh, you know, that a boll weevil uh, came and ate all the cotton. This way before I was born and you were born, I'm sure. But uh, here it says the locust had come and eaten up the, the crops and the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm. Now, the Lord is saying, I'm going to restore to you the years that this happened, my great army, which I sent among you. And you shall eat in plenty. Well, you know, if you were a farmer or you get your, you know, produce from the farm and, and, and animals come and eat that up or, harp, you know, some type of locust or insect comes, then your food is going to be uh, scarce, right? But the Lord says you're going to eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that has dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed. Now, this is talking about a natural devouring of an insect, but the Lord, there, there can be spiritual devouring of our lives. And even though it's like, you know, some type of spiritual locust came or some type of spiritual attack came, ravage your health or ravage your family or ravage your finances, or ravage your peace. And the Lord is saying, 
it, just the way the enemy comes in, he said, in the last days, I'm going to come by my spirit and restore the things that the enemy has stolen. So I'm going to talk tonight again about uh, the rain is coming. The rain of the spirit of God is coming. Uh, the Lord told me this, you know, in prayer, I heard this spirit, this in my spirit, you know, and, and I believe that, you know, when the Lord gives you a word, it's for you not to just say, OK, I'm going to wait and see what happens. No, we're not supposed to be spectators. You're supposed to use that as uh, to do warfare with. Put it in your mouth. Meditate on it. Speak it out. Amen. Yes, all of us could use a reign of the spirit. And so on the day of Pentecost, uh, when the, the Holy Spirit fell on the early church, 3,000 people in the streets witnessed this initial outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the 120 disciples and they inquired of Peter as to what they should do. And this is the way Peter responded. We're talking about the Holy Spirit, the reign of the Spirit of God. This is how Peter responded in Acts chapter 2, verse 37. It says, now, because Peter stood up and preached boldly. Now, this is the same Peter that ran when he was confronted about knowing Jesus, when Jesus was being tried, about to be crucified. Acts chapter 2, verse 27, 37 uh, says this. Now, when they heard this, uh, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Because they heard Peter preach. And verse 30, uh, 38 says, then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And verse 39 says this, for the promise is unto you and to your children and all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. I want to talk, as I said, but I want to, us to reiterate this Holy Spirit outpouring. Come on, say, Lord, pour out your spirit on me afresh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want, a, I want a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit. I don't ever want to get so comfortable that I'm like, oh, I got all the Holy Ghost I need. <laughs> no, we need more, amen. We need a, a fresh refilling because this world will suck out of you life. It'll suck out of you faith and try to, you know, you have to use up, you know, sometimes all the patience that you felt you had in one day, sometimes in one hour, but we can replenish, amen. And so, uh, Notice that he says that this outpouring, this promise of this Holy Spirit outpouring, Peter said, is to you and is to your children. And he said, he said, is to all those who are far off and as many as the Lord our God shall call. That's a wonderful promise that we should all be clinging to if you are a parent or if you have someone in your family or a friend or somebody you know who is far off from God. I mean, there are people that you may know who they seem to be far from God. God seems to be furthest thing from their life or their minds. They're not even thinking about God. Oh, I'm too young for that. I'll wait till I get older or I'm too busy or, you know, I'm not religious or I got my own thing that I'm thinking about. But the Lord says that this outpouring is for them, too. We just got to believe God for it. So it's it's essential doing these it's essential doing these last days during these last days that we actively believe for the move of the Holy Spirit. We need to be actively, every, lift up your hands and say, Lord, thank you for the reign of the Holy Spirit. I'm talking about every time you think about it, it comes to your mind. Thank you for the reign of the Holy Spirit. You may be on the streets, walking downtown or doing your job or walking in, in your neighborhood. Thank you for the reign of your spirit. Because he said he would pour out the spirit on all flesh. And sometimes you, you're walking down the street and you see some crazy things. You may experience some, some interesting things with people and say, man, people are just so far off from God. But this reign of the spirit, you know, there are, uh, there are testimonies of revival where people uh, were just walking by a church. They didn't even go in the church. And the presence of the Lord was so strong that it literally went out and drew them in the church. Or there have been people who have been, who have been, uh, how can we say, slain in the spirit just walking by the church. Fell out on the sidewalk. They don't even know what happened. The power of God hit them. And they got introduced to the Lord. 
just because the presence of the Lord was so strong. I even, you know, I even heard of this story. I was sitting in the service where they said, actually, the power of God was so strong that it looked like there was a fire on the roof and the fire department actually showed up. And they said, we see the smoke, we see the flames on your roof. And it was a supernatural sign and a wonder that brought them there. And the Lord had get, did that as a sign to draw people to it and see, no, this is the Holy Ghost. It's not a natural fire. Can you say praise the Lord? Amen. Sometimes we wonder why we don't see more miracles and supernatural deliverances than we do. I, I'm expecting that. I'm expecting that. People would, you know, we would be ministering to somebody drunk and they sober up like that. I'm expecting that we'd be ministering to somebody who's out of their mind and their mind snapped back like that. I'm expecting in the name of Jesus that we're sitting there in the hospital and, you know, somebody who is totally out of it. You know, I've only experienced that one time where that's happened. We a person was in a coma and, 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 and a friend of ours prayed and that person came out of that coma right there, right there. It shocked the nurses. It shocked everybody. It set that place off. I mean, actually, I ended up let, leading that nurse to the Lord because that happened. Amen. But I want to see some more of that. One time is not enough. I need to see some more of those things happen, but they'll happen when we begin to believe God for it. Amen. So why don't we see more of these miracles and supernatural deliverances than we do? First of all, there is an accompanying prayer connection with the ushering in of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Uh, the famous preacher John Wesley said he made this statement. He says, it seems that God can do nothing in the earth unless man ask him. Now, God is the one who set it up this way. It's not that, see, people, some people, they don't want to hear that because well, it sounds like you limiting God. He could do whatever he want to do. But God set it up so that in the earth, he gave the authority to people. In fact, the 115th Psalm, let's look at that. Psalm 115 and verse 16. And, you know, when we read these verses, it, it kind of changes how a lot of us think it. We would read it. It says, the heaven, even the heavens are the Lord's. But the earth has he given to the children of men. So the Lord has uh, put the authority of the earth in the hands of people, human beings. Amen. But in addition, the church is told, in addition to why we don't see more of these miracles than we have been seeing. Amen. And want to see is because uh, the Lord told us in his word that we need to desire spiritual gifts. Desire them. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 31 says this. Look at this. But covet. That means, you know, of course, this is a commandment. This is don't covet certain things. But this is something we can covet. Covet earnestly the best gifts. And yet I show unto you a more excellent way. He's, well, he's come out of talking about the gifts of the Spirit. There are nine gifts of the Spirit. We have the, the, the working of miracles, the uh, gifts of healing. We have uh, special faith. We have word of wisdom, word of knowledge. We have discerning of spirits. We have prophecy. We have uh, a gift of tongues, or, you know, uh, the gift of tongues. And then there's one more, uh, which I can't think of it right now. But nine, the Lord said we are to covet them, desire the spiritual gifts, and then uh, it will cause the, the spirit of God to manifest when you desire. Some, I mean, don't you... Don't you light up when somebody wants to be in your presence? Again, if you feel like somebody is not interested in you or you're just trying to talk to them, you try to make conversation, conversation with them, and they just give one word answers, no, yes. You know, and then they just, they're like, oh, they, they don't want to talk to me. Well, the Holy Spirit is a perfect gentleman. Some Christians, including some pastors and even whole denominations, have been afraid of the move of the Holy Spirit because of ex excesses they may have seen or heard about it. So they forbid people to speak tongues sometimes, or, or they, they, they mock it, or they don't even pray for the sick because they say, well, that, that's way out. But it's all in the Bible, people. Everything, you know, in these places where they reject the supernatural is just, it's just natural. It's, you know, they just preach everything natural. Everything is natural. They you know, they don't, they don't have no prayer for the sick. It's just intellectual. It's just, you know, they explain away the move of the Spirit of God. Yes, there are excesses. I'll be the first to admit it. You know, I've been in some, 
some services where people, Christians, were goofy. <laughs> uh, goofy, uh, you know, calling themselves moving in the spirit. And, and, you know, for example, I've, you know, some people think everything is a demon. Uh, they're going to cast the devil. I, I heard about this one person. They're going to cast the, the calories out of some food. And then there was this other, somebody person said, they, well, we got a gift of uh, putting permanence, or taking permanence out of people's hair. We got a gift of taking them out. Now, I'm thinking you might have something if you could put them in, but <laughs> we got a gift. That's just ignorance, you know what I mean? That's not spirit, that's not biblical, but, but however, you know, that's an excess. People go way off sometimes thinking they're being spiritual, you know, when they're being spooky or being goofy, you know, but uh, just because there are counterfeits, it doesn't do away with the authentic move of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You can you should not ignore moves of the Holy Ghost and the miraculous. You'd have to you have to disregard whole portions of the Bible because it's all throughout the Bible. The supernatural. Amen. The miraculous healings, deliverances, miraculous deliverances. It's all in the Bible. Amen. And so in this day and time in which we're living, our, our natural solutions are no match for the demonic activity that's going on in our world today. I'm going to say that again. Natural. I mean, the devil is manifesting people. You don't have to even look very far. People are doing some way out stuff, demonic things, evil, dark things. And, you, you know, you may think in your mind, how in the world did they do that? How could they even think that up? Why would, what would cause them to go so far into darkness like that? Amen. But natural solutions can't really help that. Someone once asked uh, the evangelist O. Roberts, which one of the nine spiritual gifts is the best gift? And he answered by saying that the best gift is the one that you need at that time. I thought that's an amazing, that's a proper answer, right? If you need a miracle in your life, in order for things to turn around, then the working of miracles would be the best gift for you at that time. And so we as individual Christians and as a church are to desire, desire, desire and covet the best gifts. We're to desire them. Lord, we, we desire the gifts of the Spirit. Lord, we, 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 we ask you, Lord God, for the gifts to be manifest. Lord, we desire that. We make ourselves available. In other words, not for God to just use somebody else, but to use me. I make myself available. But you don't have to use me. You can use somebody else if you so desire. I just want people to be blessed. Amen. And so we as individual Christians and as the church are to desire these gifts. Take some time to study and meditate on the gifts of the Spirit of God as, as is discussed in 1 Corinthians 12 and also Romans chapter 12. Listen, we're not okay. You're not okay. You're not okay without the presence of God. I'm not okay without the presence of God. I need, I need more of his presence. I tell you, um, I can deal with my day better. When there's more of when I've been in the presence of God, that's the best way to put it. I can deal with hard situations as long as I've been in the presence of God. And sometimes I feel like I've been in the presence of God. Then I confront something really difficult and I say, I need to go back. <laughs> Amen. I need some more of the presence of God on me. OK, uh, people, even Christian people sometimes put seeking God on the back burner until an emergency occurs, and then they ask everybody, pray, pray. I need you to pray. I need you to pray right now. I need you to pray. We need to call the fast. But listen, some emergencies, not all of them, some emergencies could be avo avoidable if we would learn how to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit all alone. Now, you can practice following the Holy Spirit in your everyday life. I'm not talking about you got to be deep. You know, just, just ask the Lord one time when you're driving and you're downtown and you need a parking space. Lord, I'm asking you to give me this one thing I say, uh, a legal close by parking space. Show me where it is. And sometimes, I, you know, you could just use your head and drive around the block five times, drive all around the area downtown. Or the Holy Spirit will say, just keep, don't turn, just keep going straight. Now, you've got to practice that. Because at first, you may miss it and hit it and miss it a couple of times. But eventually, you'll get so accurate that you'll say, I know, that's the, I know that's the Lord leading me. I know that's him directing me. You'll get so accurate, amen, that you will know 
you and you will be practicing the presence of God, practicing his leading until you will become skillful at it. Amen. Hallelujah. Listen, under the old covenant, Moses asked the Lord for his presence to go with him as he led the children of Israel. Exodus 33 verse 14 tells us the Lord's reply. He prayed, you know, he said, Lord, hey, I need you. I need you to go with me. Are you going in for a job? You going in for an interview? You need to be praying, Lord, I need your presence to come in here with me because I want to be sharp with these answers. They may ask me a question I never thought of. The Lord, well, you need to take some exams, some big exams, you know. You're applying to graduate school, law school, medical school, business school, whatever. You need to, you need to have the presence of the Lord with you at that time. Can I get an amen? The Lord replied, this is what the Lord said to Moses when he asked for his presence to go with him. He said, my presence will go with you. And I will give you rest. The enemy's always trying to give us, trying to take away our rest. Then Moses said to him, if your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. <laughs> he like, look, I don't want to go with all these people. If you're not going with me, Lord, I don't want to go. So Moses realized that he needed God's presence to carry out his assignment. I mean, that, that's vital for us to know that. We should humble ourselves and say, Lord, I need your presence for this. I need your presence. Listen, the most dangerous time is when you think you don't need the Lord. You, I got this. That's, the, that's when you need him the most. That's the time, the time when you feel the most confident is when you say, Lord, I, I, I believe I know what to do right now, but I'm just acknowledging you and ask you to, 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 to be with me. I know he's with you. Be manifest with me. Lead me. Guide me. Bless me with favor. Protect me, Lord God. Listen, that's powerful, and that's something that we need to do. We need to humble ourselves by practicing living in God's presence each day, even in the mundane things of life. Lord, I got $50 to spend in the grocery store. Now, Lord, lead me. Direct me. You know the Lord, he can put a meal together with whatever you have. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He can do that. But you got to invite him in on it. Thank you, Jesus. So Moses' assignment to lead all these people was, was difficult, but he had enough humility to recognize that he needed to carry more of God's presence in order to be effective. And I want this message tonight to remind you, to remind all of us to become increasingly aware of our need for God's presence at all times. And just, you know, you could just say it. Thank you, Lord, for being with me. Thank you, Lord, that as I go do this today, you're with me. Thank you, Lord, for guiding me, for instructing me, for teaching me, for giving me, for giving me wisdom today. And then thank you for your protection and your direction. God, order my footsteps today. Now, listen, technically, God never leaves the believer. He will not leave or forsake us. Yet, when we develop the practice of yielding to the Lord, he will manifest himself more fully. Hallelujah. Like I said before, when somebody pays attention to you, you tend to light up. Oh, somebody's listening to me. Somebody cares what I think. Somebody cares about my opinion. Somebody's interested enough to really stand there and listen to me. I mean, you know how some people are before you can even finish your sentence, they cut you off. They're already thinking about what they're going to say next. They haven't even listened to what you said. You know, we have to break that habit, don't we? Some, some of us do. Amen. So, so, so even going back to yielding to the Holy Spirit, let's look at Romans chapter 6. In verse 13, Romans chapter 6 and verse 13. This is a good verse that I learned, oh, many years ago. Very young, maybe a teenager or something like that. Uh, late teenager. But neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and yield your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Notice the phrase, yield yourself. You know, so many people have the idea that God makes you do stuff. You know, boy, God will make you. He'll humble you. He'll make you do. But he said, humble yourself. And here he says, yield yourself. In other words, he wants us to make the effort to do that. Yield yourself overall. Yield your members. The Holy Spirit is a perfect gentleman. He will not force himself on us even if we need help. When we yield ourselves to the Lord, it gives him the license and the opportunity to manifest himself fully in our lives. 
your life will be better with an awareness of his presence. Now, we know this, but it's good to remind ourselves the Holy Spirit can be more or less manifested in our lives depending upon our willingness to yield to him. Yielding it, you know, it, requir it requires some, some uh, submitting ourselves because you may not want to yield. I mean, you know, you know, I mean, the spirit may lead you to one, that's it, just one more cookie and that's it. Now I have to decide whether I want to yield or not. Think about it. I have to decide whether I want to yield or not. Uh, or do I, I'm going to eat this other cookie and then repent. <laughs> Amen. Or whatever it is. It may not be a cookie. It may be something else. It may be, you know, something else that the Lord is directing us to do. Remember that in our yielding to him, the Lord is never trying to take something away from us. He's rather trying to add to us. The Lord's trying to add to us, not take away from us. More of God's manifest presence and power will greatly add to and enhance our lives as well as enable our lives to be a greater blessing to those around us. Come on, let's say again, thank you for the reign of the Spirit, Lord. Thank you for the reign of the Holy Spirit. Lord God, we praise you for your power raining down on us in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, some people think they think, well, if the Lord told me to yield to him, I would do that. But the Lord has given us this word and he's given us this instruction in his word, the Bible. In the word, he outlines how he does things. Let's look at 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. So decide to yield to God's word and learn his ways, and we don't have to guess about him. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 says this, all scripture, everybody say all scripture, and it's all the Bible, is given by inspiration of God. This, yes, people wrote it down, but when you see the consistency over the hundreds of years that it was written, and how it's all cohesive, you know no man, no intellect could have done that, because Many of the people weren't even alive at the same time. Hundreds of years separate the writers to Scripture. Yet all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. And what does it say about Scripture or Bible? It is profitable for doctrine. Somebody said, well, I just don't know what doctrine to believe. The Bible. Pray and ask the Lord to open up your understanding. And I'm not, I, I, I believe you should, you should belong to a church. Amen. But, you know, you can read your Bible and trust the Lord to instruct you. It's profitable for doctrine. The scripture is profitable for reproof. Reproof means, of course, any correction. But then it goes on to say it's profitable for correction. Everybody needs correcting in some way, some form, some fashion. Now, praise God, the Lord doesn't correct us all about everything at the same time. We couldn't take it. But as we yield to him, you just read scripture and it'll correct you like, Wow, I didn't know. I, I guess I need to make that adjustment. It's also good for instruction in righteousness. And then this verse tells you why. It says, so that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished under all good works. But thoroughly equipped for every good work. Thoroughly equipped. Uh, you know, this is really important. That's the 17th verse. That's why the Lord says he gives us the scripture. We're talking about the outpouring of the spirit. The spirit and the word go hand in hand. How do we know if it's goofy or it's godly? <laughs> if it's not scriptural, then you, know, then you know, oh, that wasn't the spirit of God leading me. Amen. This is really important. So in addition to his word, we learn how to yield to the Holy Spirit. Yield to his spirit in everyday life. Now, I, I was very intrigued by this story. You know, I went, Candy and I, my wife went to Bible school in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and the founder of Rhema Bible Training Center was uh, Brother Kenneth E. Hagan. And uh, one of the things he has this series on, how to be led by the Spirit of God. I began to listen to that very young. Got the whole series. It was like, man, like 40 tapes. That's a lot of tapes. But at any rate, he began to talk about uh, being led by the Spirit specifically in different areas of life. About healing and about all kinds of things and how the Lord directed him even to be healed when he was like 15. He didn't, he didn't know any preacher around him that believed in healing. But just through reading scripture and following the Holy Spirit, he was directed into that. But in one particular instance, he went to preach at this church. And, uh, you know, his reputation was, you know, he was a spiritual man. He, he talked with the Lord. The Lord talked with him about 
different things and ministry and personal life and all this kind of thing. So the pastor who picked him up wanted to make a little joke. And so he said, well, you want to drive? And so Brother Hagin said, well, sure, I'll drive. And so he had never been to this place before. And so he said, well, I'm not going to tell you the directions. Just let the Holy Spirit direct you. That's what he said to Brother Hagin. And Brother Hagin, you know, sometimes he would just laugh. He said, ha, <laughs> ha, He laughed because he was very, very confident in following the Holy Spirit. Very confident. And so he just listened to the inside man. And when the Holy Spirit said, turn here, turn there. When the Holy Spirit said, just keep going straight, he kept going straight, turn here. And he drove all the way to the church, pulled in the parking lot, looked at the other minister and laughed and said, ha, ha. <laughs> Listen, I'm telling you, this is real, people. You can be so developed in the spirit of God that you can know God is talking to you just like you know your friend or your brother, your sister, your mother, your father is talking to you. You can, know, you can know him like that. You can know him personally like that. It's just that most people don't get close enough. Most people don't desire it enough. Most people don't even think it's possible to know God like that. In fact, you start telling people you heard God talk. The average natural carnal person would think you cuckoo. You know, you, oh, you talk to God, huh? You talk to God. God talk back? <laughs> yes. Amen. So you can be led by the Spirit of God. I'm not talking about voices. Uh, the Lord can speak, not usually in an audible voice, but the Bible speaks about him speaking in an inward witness, a still small voice. Um, also about, um, how can I say, your heart having a conviction, a peace. You have a you know, a, a check about a no about something, or you have a green light on the inside when you pray about something. You know, I learned how to follow this. Uh, the same person, Kenneth Hagin, said this. He said, I go as much by what God doesn't say as by what he does say. That helped me a lot. Well, if I'm praying about something, Lord, I'm praying for direction on this. I need to know, should we do this? Should we do th not do this? And, you know, sometimes you feel like, man, I've been praying about this for weeks. Lord, you ain't saying nothing. So this is what I learned to say years ago. Lord, I'm getting ready to do this. I've prayed. I put it before you. I've acknowledged you. So if I shouldn't make this move, then speak to me. Direct me because I'm about to make this move. That's how I got married. Now, I had prayed about a couple of other girls and said, Lord, I like this girl. You know, uh, should we, should, is this my wife? And two times at least he said, no, that's not your wife. But when it came to my wife, Candy, he didn't say nothing. I was like, Lord, I mean, is this my wife? So this is what I said, Lord, I'm going to make a move on this now. So if I should not make a move, then talk to me. Tell me. Lead me, and I'll follow you. He never said anything, so that was my green light. <laughs> this, that's, this is, we're talking about being led by the Spirit, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. But we had to learn how to cooperate with him, follow him. So uh, very quickly... And then I'll close. Thank you, Jesus. This is important because everybody needs to, we all need to refine being led by the Lord. We can refine it some. I certainly can, big time. Refine knowing that the Lord has directed me to do this or not to do that. Take this step and don't take that step. Amen. Uh, it says, John chapter 16, verse 13, How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. He's not going to guide you into a lie, but he'll guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself. The Holy Spirit won't speak of himself. But whatsoever he, the Holy Spirit, shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you. He will show you. He will show you in your spirit things to come. I can't tell you how many times I saw things. I saw visions. I was praying, and I saw things before me play out. And I knew in here, oh, the Lord showed me what to do just from that. That's a lot of the way how he leads me a lot of times. Is I see things in here when I'm praying and, and, I, and I know, oh, that's the Lord directing me in that particular thing. That's called a word of wisdom. It just came in the form of a dream. We see that all throughout the Bible. So scriptures teaches that there are certain atmospheres that are more or less conducive to God's presence. There are certain atmospheres that are more or less conducive to God's presence. Number one, forgiveness. In a forgiving atmosphere, the Lord will manifest himself more often. In an atmosphere where people don't forgive much, they hold grudges, 
they're not often going to hear God very much. They're going to be, I'm not saying they're not saved. I'm just saying they're going to always be saying, I don't know what the Lord said. I don't know what he's saying. Mark chapter 11, verse 25 says this. And whenever you stand praying, it doesn't say sometimes when you pray. It says whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, anyone, that can include the president, anybody, forgive him. That could be the person driving in front of you. So I mean, sometimes I got to say at least two or three times a day, Lord, I forgive them for cutting me off. <laughs> it's real. I do say this because I mean, I could get real angry when somebody just drives straight crazy. It almost caused me to have an accident and they don't even know it. They just zipping by, you know, all that kind of stuff. But the Lord said, forgive him that your father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. God will manifest in a forgiving atmosphere. And this is important for us to know. We can forgive in faith even when we don't feel like forgiving. So you don't always have to feel forgiving because I know some people say, well, I'm not phony. I'm not going to say I forgive him if I don't feel like, if I don't feel forgiveness. Well, it's not phony, it's faith. It's obedience because the Lord said forgive him. So you just say, you know what? I forgive you for that. Or if you don't see the person, you can just say it out loud. Father, I forgive Joe. I forgive him. I, I release them. I let that go. Now, that don't mean your feelings are there. But the Lord will work on your feelings when you take the first step and forgive. Secondly, God also will manifest himself more powerfully in a faith-filled environment that will draw God's presence. Faith will draw his presence and his power to you. Unbelief will do the exact same do the exact opposite. It will repel the power. Anybody seen magnets before? You know, they have different poles. And if you put the same poles up to each other, it'll push out. But if it is opposite poles, they will attract and lock in. Amen. The same thing is true about faith and the power of God. Faith will draw God's power to you. Unbelief will repel God's power. Mark chapter 5, verse 30 it says this, and Jesus immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, you see the multitude thronging you, Lord? Everybody's touching you and you asking who touched me? And he looked around about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. Verse 34, and he said to them, no, we want to go to the 34th verse of Mark 5, says this, and he said unto her, daughter, thy faith, what does it say? Did he say my power? No, it was his power, but your faith has made you whole. Go in peace and be whole of your plague. So her faith drew the power out. Your faith will cause God's power to manifest. Amen. So her faith drew the anointing power of God or a manifestation of his presence. It, it caused God to manifest. Mark chapter 6. Come on, stay with me a few more minutes. We'll be finished. We're talking about the reign of the Spirit of God. How do you, uh, how do you create an atmosphere that God wants to manifest himself? We're talking about that. That's important. It's, not, it's never going to be a strife-filled environment, fussing, arguing. Mm -mm. that the Lord won't manifest there. So you can just, you have to start practicing. No, we, I'm not going to do that. It may be a while if you're used to doing that. Mark chapter 6, verse 4, Jesus said unto them, a prophet is without honor except in his own town. A prophet is not without honor. In other words, everybody honors a prophet except in his own town, among his relatives and in his own home. Hallelujah. Uh, so it says in verse 5, after he said this, he said, Jesus could not do any miracles there except that he lay his hands on a few sick folk and healed them. So even though Jesus has all power and anointing without measure, he is and was the Messiah, his anointing wouldn't work fully in this location because the people didn't believe in the anointing that was on his life. Hallelujah. Okay, one more, one more environment that the power of God won't manifest very often, or will, I should say, will manifest very often and easily is a praising and a thankful environment. Hallelujah. Come on, say a praising and a thankful environment. This is very important, people. Wherever people praise God, God will manifest himself more readily 
in this environment. I don't know why it is, but I know it just is all throughout the Bible. Amen. Uh, even in the Old Testament, when King Jehoshaphat was surrounded by the enemy, they praised God and God set ambushments against the enemy. I want to read, you know, this is really important. Remember, they, they, they sent God, got involved because they started praising God before they even won the battle. That's where that, that's where that song comes from. Don't wait for the battle until the battle is over. Shout now. Amen. Because in the end, you know you're going to win. You got to learn how to pray. I'm learning more. Praise him. I spent half my, my prayer time this morning praising the Lord, praising him, just, just going around thanking him. Put, holding his word up to him and say, Lord, this is your promise. I thank you for this promise manifesting right here. I thank you for it manifesting in the church, in the families in the church. I thank you for it manifesting in other churches. I thank you for your presence manifesting in the Congress, U.S. Congress, in the Senate, in the White House. Thank you for your presence manifesting in the schools. Yeah, I just begin to go down the line and thank the Lord for his presence manifesting. Acts chapter 16, this is my last verse. Hallelujah. And the 22nd verse, and this is talking about the preacher Paul and his partner in the ministry on this journey, Silas. And they got arrested for preaching the gospel. And not only were they arrested, but they beat them. Back in those days, that was legal. They beat them, and then they put their hands in stocks. And it says in the 23rd verse, and when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison charging the jailer to keep them safely. Verse 24, who having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in stocks. Verse 25 says, and at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed, but they didn't stop there. And sang praises unto God and the prisoners heard them. Now, they were bold uh, because, you know, Think about it. It's midnight. Prisoners are asleep. Some of them sleep. But you singing so loud that they heard you. You know, this is not the, the glee club. This is prisoners, right? This is not the Boy Scouts. But they prayed and they sang praises out loud and the prisoners heard them. Verse 26 says this. And suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately, not some of the doors. God is so amazing. He didn't just open the doors of the preachers. He didn't just open the doors of the good guys. All the doors were open and everyone's bands were loose. So whoever had chains on, they just fell off. Shackles on their ankles, they fell off. Somebody said, well, weren't they afraid the prisoners would get away? God know his power. Everybody was too afraid to move. The power of God was so manifested in there, the people were still. Someone probably tried to wonder what in the world just happened. <laughs> What's going on? Amen. Listen, but as I close, remember this. Life is far better when we live it with a greater awareness of God's manifest presence. Covet, desire God's gift and his presence. Let's begin to include this in our prayer time. You know, Lord, we thank you for your, for your last day, Holy Ghost, our pouring on all flesh. We thank you for the rain of the Spirit. Lord, we thank you for manifesting your presence. We thank you for miracles, signs and wonders. Well, I'm telling you when, when you can help somebody uh, by getting the pre carrying the presence of God in a stronger, uh, weightier uh, measure and you can bless somebody on your block or bless somebody at your job or bless somebody at school because you're carrying the presence of God. Hallelujah. It's going to make a difference. People are going to get saved. People are going to get set free. People are going to get healed uh, in a greater measure. So in prayer, let's accelerate thanking the Lord for the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Practice yielding to the Lord. Practice yielding to the word of God and to the Holy Spirit. And learn to build and maintain an environment that is conducive for God to manifest himself. Learn to build that atmosphere. Amen. All of us are working on that. We are human beings. You know, we can... You, we can get angry. We can get short sometimes. You know, uh, doesn't mean we're bad people. Don't mean we don't love the Lord. But we had to practice pulling our chain in. We had to practice saying, okay, that, I, didn't, I said the right thing, but I didn't say it with the right attitude. 
I, I, I raise my voice. I apologize. Would you forgive me? And we learn how to do that. You do that a couple of times, you, 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 you will be uh, not so quick to just go off, fly off the handle. <laughs> it's humbling to repent. It's humbling to apologize and to say, you know what? I did that wrong. That wasn't correct. I was disrespectful. And I need you, I, I'm asking you to forgive me. But create that atmosphere. And I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost will come in and manifest himself when you create these type of environments. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you tonight for your people tonight. Those listening to me under the sound of my voice, those here in the auditorium, I thank you, Lord, for your great spirit. The greater one who lives on the inside of us, as the Apostle John says, greater is he that's in us in the believer than he that's in the world. So no matter how great the turmoil on the outside is, the one living on the inside is greater. And Father, I pray that you would help us to live with the growing uh, uh, um, knowledge, God, and awareness of the greatness of your presence. Lord, we desire that you manifest yourself in a greater measure. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. We desire that you pour out your spirit on all flesh in the earth and we thank you for it in the name of the lord jesus christ we praise you for it in jesus name amen hallelujah well thank god for each of you all today hallelujah before we go we want to give everybody an opportunity to to uh give in an offering and i pray that if you've received something from uh, the ministry that you give so into it amen the Bible says if we receive spiritual things from a ministry, we shouldn't think it's strange to give natural things or carnal things, that's way it says it in the New Testament. So as the Lord would direct your heart, amen, if you receive something, then, you know, give as the Lord directs you to give. On your screen, it tells you how you can give. And I want to pray for every giver tonight. Father, I thank you, Lord, for every gift, every offering, every tithe somebody may be giving. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you multiply back har harvest to them, even as you promised, 30, 60, even 100 fold. We thank you for it. Father, there may be somebody watching or listening who desires to give that doesn't have anything. But Father, and I say to you, if you just want something to give, just ask the Lord to give you seed, give you to, to cause it to come to you. Prosper that person so that it comes to them. And then when he gives it to you, make sure that you give it as you ask him for it. In Jesus' name, we thank you for it, Lord. Amen. Well, praise the Lord for what you've given. What you're giving. And I want to uh, uh, make a couple of announcements before we go today. On this coming Saturday uh, at 8 a.m., is Women's Holy Spirit Prayer, Good Morning Holy Spirit Prayer. It will be in person. It will also be streamed, but I invite you ladies to come out from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. this coming Saturday morning, just a few days from now, here at Maranatha, 6841 South State Street in Chicago, Illinois. And also I want to uh, I'll put something on your mental calendar on uh, June 25th, we will have Super Saturday for our children, ages 3 to 11, here at the church. It is a time of teaching the children the Bible, uh, uh, playing games, some, some good, nice uh, Christian games, and also having a nice, fun time of food and all that kind of stuff. Please bring them out. Uh, children need spiritual activities, and it's summertime. I know some of you all are not out of school yet. Some of the children are not in Chicago, but you know, some of you all don't live in the Chicago proper. Bring your kids to Maranatha on that day, Super Saturday, ages 3 to 11. And then on uh, June 26, we invite you to come out for our, be our guest at our groundbreaking ceremony for our new church edition, uh, June 26 at 12 noon. So we'll be at the end of our morning service. Uh, come out and join us, amen. It's going to be outside and be blessed. Amen. We're going to have a good time, and uh, we hope you come to be here with us on that day. Praise the Lord. Well, I want to thank you for joining us tonight. 
Uh, and I'm going to pray God's blessing upon you there and here in the auditorium. If you would stand, please. And we're going to prepare to be dismissed. Thank the Lord for each of you all. Thank you for watching. Thank you all for attending who are here tonight. Father, I thank you, Lord, for every person under the sound of my voice. I don't believe it's a coincidence. We don't believe, I don't believe in coincidences, but I thank you for drawing them to you. Now, Holy Spirit, this message of the Holy Spirit outpouring, take this message that they have heard, and I ask you to minister it to individuals, what they need to hear. Father God, and I thank you for making us sharp, skillful in walking in sensitivity to the leading and the direction of the Holy Ghost. And Father, we thank you for outpouring and rain like never before in this earth. In Jesus' name, as we prepare to go, we thank you for angelic protection. Thank you for keeping us, spirit, soul, and body from the attack of the enemy. Father, we plead the blood of Jesus.